One of the most overlooked, kind of glossed over topics when it comes to understanding the command line um, or the bash shell is that of users and groups. There seems to be a lot of confusion online um, on Stack Overflow and SuperUser.com and Ubuntu forums as to how we're permissioning different directories and folders, especially when it comes to like web servers and stuff. So I wanted to go over um, what a user is, what a group is, and how we kind of use those um, in correlation with the permissioning system of a Unix-based operating system. So for starters, a user is any entity that can own processes, run files, um, and kind of belong to a, a bigger group of users. And then a group is simply a container for all of those users. And the usefulness of a group is not like readily apparent. So I wanted to start it off with a brief example of why this might be useful. So consider like a corporate environment where um, there's Unix admin, or it would be not Unix, but like a Windows administrator, or if they're running um, a Mac system or a Linux system, it, any administrator that's running um, the background processes for the company. They have noticed that some of their employees are talking about how they're having issues connecting to the corporate Wi Fi. So this administrator may go on to write just a basic um, shell script that will resolve these issues for the employees. But the problem is, how do we like distribute this script out to all of our employees um, without giving them administrator access to the system? And the way that we would do that is by putting permissions on that particular script file. Now it'd be very tedious to walk through every employee who is they're all would all be users on the system. It'd be very tedious to walk through all of those and give individual users permissions. But maybe this administrator has a group set up for all of these users, and therefore all of the users belong to a single group. So all that administrator needs to do now is allow executable access to this particular script for the entire group. And by default, all we have to do is run one command, we give access to the script to the entire group, and voila, you have a script that can be run by any employee and their Wi-Fi problems are solved. Now this is kind of a rudimentary example of the purpose of groups and users, but it's hopefully kind of gives you a real world understanding of why we have these on bigger systems. It's very hard to understand as an individual user like myself and probably you um, to understand like why we have this user management system because I mean we're only one user we don't really need to set permissions for different files because nobody else is using our computer. So keep in mind that this is more of a broad architecture for situations where you do actually have multiple users and also remember that a user is not necessarily a human being. It could be just a process, or not a process, but a you know an application, um, a server on your computer. So that's kind of the usefulness of this whole permissioning system. That said, let's kind of start to dig into the different commands we can run to understand what users are um, and more information about them. And we'll kick it off with the user called root. Now this is kind of something that everyone um, has in the back of their head and kind of intuitively understand that the root user would obviously be the most powerful or super user on the system. And this root user comes by default on many of these Unix based or not many, all of the Unix based operating systems because a user is needed to run a specific process and so therefore it has to come with the user. Now on my distribution which is Ubuntu I don't have a password set for my root user and that is by default because as an individual we do not want to run as the root user because it could kind of be detrimental to our computer as we can run any command at any level and essentially destroy the system on accident. So therefore we log in as a different user and 
elevate our privileges only on an as-needed basis. So let's take a look at the terminal here and see how we might use the root user. So let me go to my home directory here. Um, you can see that I'm actually in the home Zach, so Zach is a user here. We'll talk about that in a second. Now to switch to the root user, all we would need to do is press or type the command su. Now if I press enter, it's going to ask me for a password. Now there's one problem here because my Ubuntu distribution does not come set up with a root password. So therefore, no matter what I type and press enter, it's not going to let me operate as the root user. If I wanted to operate as the root user like full time um, and just kind of log in and essentially be the root user, I would need to set up a password for this account. And a lot of the Ubuntu documentation or Linux documentation recommends that you don't try to do this. You need to set up your own user and then instead of switching and using root full time, what you would do is run the sudo command prior to any command that needs root access. So we know that we can run elevated privileges by adding the sudo in front of any command that we do. But what is the actual usefulness of the elevated privileges that we have here? So I have three main reasons that I would lay out, and that is one, to edit system configuration files. So for example, the Etsy sudoers file, if I wanted to use Vim to edit this, it's not going to let me, it's gonna say permission denied at the bottom, so let me get out of that and prepend the sudo command to the front. And now I can actually edit my file here and make changes to such a system file. So let me get out of that. Um, we will override, oh, we got caps lock on here. Q, okay, so we're out of there. Now another reason is to install global programs. So if we, for example, um, we're using Node.js and we would do npm install and then add the global flag and then we'd say you know whatever package name that we want to download that would need root access to do and then also a big one which we'll get into is to change the ownership of different files and directories you can't always do that with um, a basic users permissions now that we have a better idea of what the usefulness of sudo or elevated privileges is Let's go ahead and see all of the users that are on our computer. And the way that we would do that is by typing the following command. Now we're using the cut utility, which will just kind of remove some of the unnecessary output. But really what we're doing is printing the contents of the etc password file, which basically lists all of the users on our system you can see the names of all the users on the system. Um, we'll go through of them, through a few of them. So we got root, that makes sense. We just talked about that. Um, there's one called WW data. That would be like a web server coming in. So like if you set up a WordPress website, you would need to give uh, WW data access to the site files. Um, let's see if there's any other ones that pop out. Obviously, Zach right here would be a user that is what I operate as. And then you see this Bob user, which is just a test user that I created a few days ago um, when preparing for this video. So these are all the users that are on my system. Now, what if we wanted to find out a little bit more about each of the users? The two that I'm interested in would be Root and Zach, which is my current user. So the way that we do that, um, first we can figure out who I'm operating as by typing this command, who am I? It'll say Zach, no surprise there. Now what we can do is go into the password file and find a little bit more, like we're gonna print a little bit more verbose out, output. So we can say sudo cat um, etc password, and then what we're gonna do is pipe that output. So we're gonna get a bunch of output. Um, so if we just press enter, you can see that we're gonna have a whole lot of output. We don't need all of this. All we need is 
the output for my user and the root user. So we'll pipe that output, we're gonna get into pipes later, into a command called grep, and then we'll search for my user. And as you can see, this prints out the single line that represents my user. Let's go ahead and walk through um, what all of this means. So we'll start off on the left. This is the name of the user. And let, let me just get root here as well so that we can see a comparison. So we have the Zach user and then the root user. So the first um, item would be the name of the user, so Zach and root. And then we have a colon. The colon separates each of the different fields. Um, you see this little X, which means this is telling us that this particular user's password, or like the encrypted password um, that is associated with this user, is stored in the um, etc shadow file. We don't really need to know a whole lot about this, just interesting to kind of know. So that X represents, um, tells the system that the password's in the shadow file. Then we have the user ID and then the group ID for this user. And you can see that root is always gonna be zero, zero. Um, then we have, in this little output, we have the name, or like the full written out name of the user. Um, for root, it's just root. For Zach, I just, you know, typed in Zach. You'll see how this works in a second. And then the next one would be the home directory. Um, obviously root is at the top, the slash root directory. Now I have a home directory of home Zach, so if I just type CD, that's gonna put me at the home Zach directory. And then finally, what shell we're gonna use for this user, which is pretty much always going to be bin bash or the bash shell. Okay, so we've got a little bit more information about the current user. So. Next, let's go into looking at some of the different groups. And the way that we can see what groups we are a part of is by typing the groups command. You can see we kind of went through this a little bit earlier, but these are all the groups that the Zach user is a part of. Now, this doesn't list all the groups on the system, so what we're going to do is sudo cat etc group, and that is a file that has all of the groups that are on the system. Um, and you can just kind of scroll through these and figure out what all the groups are. Um, let's walk through just a simple example. Let me just find my user, so, or my group. So we have, um, you can see that there's multiple instances of this because I'm part of all of these different groups. So this would be the users like at the end of your um, output here would be the additional users that are in the group. But this one right here is my actual group called Zach. And you can see that, that the left part is the group name. Um, the X is again the kind of password thing. You generally don't use a password for groups. And then you have the group ID followed by any additional users in the group. So that's kind of how you get more information about the groups. Um, just to recap, the groups are stored in Etsy group file, and then the users are in the Etsy um, password file, or passwd. Although you're not probably going to be doing a whole lot of uh, user and group creation and deletion, it's still useful to understand how we um, create groups, create users, add users to groups, remove users from groups, um, so on and so forth. So let's get into a few of those commands. The first one would be the add user. So we say sudo add user, and then we're going to give a name to our user. So we'll just say Alice. Okay, so it's going to create Alice. Um, as you see, it also creates a new group called Alice. Um, all users are created with a new group. And then you can enter Alice's password. So you just set the password and then the full name, Alice Smith, very generic. And this full name, again, was in the uh, Etsy password file in that like middle field. And then room number, I don't know why you would need that. Your work phone, not sure, whatever. We'll do yes, clear the screen. So we have created Alice as a user. 
Now we also might want to create another group. So go back to our example about the employees, how we may want to add a bunch of users to an employees group so that we can kind of distribute um, a Wi-Fi script to all of them. The way that we would do that is sudo add group and then we'll just say employees. It says adding group employees with this particular ID. And then finally, we can add Alice to the employees group. So the way we do that is sudo user mod um, dash a for we want to append and then give it the flag group and then we give the group name so employees we just created that and then Alice is the user that we want to add to the employees group so we added Alice to the employees group now in, until we get into like the permission sets we're not going to fully understand um, the usefulness of adding users to to a group but let me just kind of go through this really quick um, also we want to talk about how we switch to a different user within the shell which is also going to make a little bit more sense when we get into the bash configuration files so if we wanted to switch over to Alice all we need to do is su and then type Alice and then what we're going to do is give it a little flag called login or we could just do dash L and what this is going to do is enter a shell um, enter a login shell as Alice and again we'll talk about this in, in a few minutes so we're gonna enter Alice's password and now you see instead of Zach at Z Ubuntu we have Alice at Z Ubuntu and we can also see if we print the working directory that we are now in home Alice instead of home Zach. You can see that we have the Alice, Bob, and Zach home directories because I've created all three of these users. Now, until we get into permissions, I'm not going to get into um, too much about this. Let's just go back to our home directory and we can switch back out to um, my actual user. So we'll get into Zach and We'll talk about these in a second. We've created a new user and added that user to a group that we created. Now what if we wanted to delete the user and or the group? To do that, we just, and before I do this, let me say this is kind of a dangerous command. Um, I wouldn't just use this um, freely. Be careful when you're doing this because you're going to delete the home directory of your user here. But anyways, to delete a particular user and then the group, well first we'll delete the group and then we'll delete the user. So sudo, um, I think it is group del for delete and then we can say our group was employees. We need to give it the password for our user account and there we go. We do not have the employees group anymore. We can also delete Alice who we created so user delete and then we're gonna pass this dash R so that it deletes all the directories the home directory for this user and we'll say Alice it's going to say Alice mail spool not found that's totally fine we didn't set that up so um, don't worry about that output 